What's going on everybody? Mr. Enyart here with Mr. Enyart's Mathematical Compositions and this is Grade 6, Module 5, Lesson 12, focusing on a new formula for volume of three-dimensional objects, rectangular prisms and cubes, base times height. So, let's do it! All right, Grade 6, Module 5, Lesson 12. So now they're going to go ahead and give us the base. All right, now base is found by just doing the length times the width, right? So um, if we have this base right here and we know the length and the width and we multiply them and we get three and a quarter inches squared, all right? That is what we would call the bottom layer of this three-dimensional object because then it tells us there is a height, right? And so the height would be coming up from that so we're just going to bring that up. And the question is, if we're going up, how, how much is that height? Well, it's two and a half inches according to that. So what can we do with two and a half and three and a quarter, which we already found by doing length times width? Well, we just multiply them because if the area, or sorry, if the formula for volume is length times width times height, and we go ahead and multiply length times width, that gives us the base and then we still have the height, right? And so understanding that in a three-dimensional object, the base is found by multiplying length times width, you can then just do base times height. So here's another formula for volume that you might see. If they already give you the base, that is assuming they have multiplied the length and the width. Then you're just also multiplying height. And we know with the commutative property of multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you do your factors, as long as it's the same numbers, and you're multiplying them, um, you can do them in any order, right? Um, the associative grouping property tells you the same thing when we add parentheses or we add multiple factors. So I could do length times width times height. I could do height times width times length. I could do height times length times width. Those will all give me the volume. And so if base is found, right, by doing length times width, then that just takes care of this section of each of these options. And then we can just take that base and multiply it by the height. So this is what they're going to be talking about in lesson 12. So let's try an example using our new formula. Number, or I guess this is just called extension. There's no number here. We have a rectangular prism, a box of some sort with a volume of six feet cubed. So I have written that here. And it says that the base must be two and a half square feet. So we know the bottom layer, right? The base, the very bottom of it. If you could pick this up and just stare at the bottom, its area is two and a half square feet. All right, we want to know the volume. So we're going to use the formula volume equals base times height, understanding that this is volume. And so this base means length times width, which is already done from our length times width times height formula. And since we know that, we know that volume equals two and a half times h, and we even know that volume is 6. So 6 equals 2 and a half h. Now all we have to do is divide each side by 2 and a half, which will cancel them out on the right, and leave us h. So over here I did 6 divided by 2.5, which is 2 and a half in decimal form. So I move my decimal, I add my 0, and as I keep going, I end up with 2.4, which I know is 2 and 2 fifths. But 10 20 fifths, 10 is my leftover out of 25. When you divide those by 5, you get 2 fifths. So our height has to be 2 and 2 fifths feet tall. And we could then figure out that base times height, which would be 2 and a half times 2 and 2 fifths, would equal our total volume of six cubic feet. Okay, so pause the video and try the problem set on your own. Go ahead and use whatever formula you need. In this case, the first question, it looks like they're not giving you the base yet, right? You have length, width, and height, so you're gonna use LWH as our formula, but then some of them give you the base. So it just wants to see that you can use those formulas to find missing information and solve for volume or any of the parameters of the actual three-dimensional object. All right, so let's go over the answers for the problem set. Number one, classic length times width times height formula. And when we multiply those, we get 21 over 32 meters cubed, making sure we put our units cubed since we are multiplying them by themselves three times. Number two, we're using base times height, 
So you can see that um, the base was giving to us, and so that's 19 fourths. Again, one key skill is transferring mixed numbers into improper fractions so you can multiply easily, um, which I have a video on that if you want to go back and look at that if you're confused on how to do this computation more easily. So that ends up being 133 over 12, and when you divide those to make it back to a mixed number, it's 11 and 1 12th cubic feet. For number three, kind of spread it out over here, so let's follow it along. And um, the length is, I wrote, 3 and a half W, okay, because it says it's 3 and a half times longer than the width, so the length has to be whatever the width is times 3 and a half. The height is 1 fourth of the width, so whatever the width is times 1 fourth. Well, they gave us the width, which is 3. So then I just plug it into my formulas. See how easy that is? And then I end up with a length of 10 and a half centimeters, a height of 3 quarter centimeters, and a width of 3 centimeters. Then I just use my length times width times height formula, and I plug them in as improper fractions when I need to, or just as a fraction if it is, and I end up with 189 eighths, and when you divide that, you end up with 23 and 5 eighths cubic centimeters as the volume. For number 4 and number 5, I'm going to kind of blow through these because um, showing it in multiple ways is saying that we can do base times height, we can do length times width times height, we can do height times width times length. Um, so again, this one I just did length times width times height. I could have done this times this first and called that the base and then multiplied the sixth. It really doesn't matter as long as you end up with 105 cubic inches. Same thing over here. Um, I just multiplied length times width times height, but I could have done any order I want, and I will end up with the same answer. So, there's one through five. And for number six and seven, for six, you can see I just filled out the height going uh, by ones. That was the pattern that I was recognizing. And um, for the volume, I obviously one centimeter times our base of 36 is 36. Then down here, I just, I had five sets of 36. So I added one set of 36, giving me 216, plus another set of 36 would give me 252. And then if I added 36 to that, I would end up at the 288. So my equation is that my volume is 36H and h is my height. So I'm just really looking at my unit rate of this proportional relationship is 36 to 1, 36 being my volume and 1 being my height. And so um, that means in this situation, whatever the height is, I can multiply it by 36 to find my volume. And so for number 7, we're just using the base times height formula. Since we're already given um, the height and we have the volume, we're looking for the base. We're just going to say that 16.328 is equal to 3.14, the height, times my base. So I divide by the 3.14 to cancel it out, leaving me my base. And 16.328 divided by 3.14 is 5.2 centimeters, which will be the base. All right, so let me know what you think and write me a message on Schoology if you need to or go check out that volume and surface area video on Edpuzzle. Let me know if you have any other questions, comment and like, and I will talk to you later.